she's based here. Uh, she's from Egypt. She has been a journalist who's covered the region and the world. Um, and in uh, the last year has emerged as a leading voice, uh, I think, uh, explaining uh, what's going on to Western audiences um, and also as a, a leading feminist voice on uh, very important issues that are going to continue to arise in, uh, both before and after these, uh, these revolutions take place. Um, and Mona uh, decided... Uh, that what she wanted to talk about was the, I think, the, if I understand it correctly, the revolution that really is happening in people's minds. Um, I give you Mona El-Tahawi. Thank you, Nika. Hi, everyone. Um, I want to thank Mika and Andrew for um, inviting me to take part, and I want to salute my fellow Egyptians who already spoke. And, yes. <laughs> and salute the revolutions everywhere and those to come. In 2005, I was sitting on the balcony of one of my aunt's homes in Cairo, excitedly explaining to her family and a guest about these demonstrations that I'd been taking part in. And her, her guest looked at me and said, what do you think you guys are gonna do? You think, first of all, you're gonna do anything to Mubarak? You think the Americans are gonna let you do anything? You know, it's just a bunch of kids with messy hair like you who think that anything will change. <laughs> and so to people with messy hair everywhere, especially Ala, <laughs> because as you can see, us Egyptians have uh, full heads of hair, um, don't give up. Because Ala is actually the reason that I was in those demonstrations in the first place, and I always love to tell this story, because what I want to discuss with you today, especially regarding social media and its intersections with revolution, is the power of the eye. Because it was one afternoon when I was in my apartment in New York. It was, in, it was actually May the 25th, 2005, so almost exactly six years ago, where the power of the eye reached out from my laptop, grabbed my throat, and shook me, and convinced me that something amazing is happening in Egypt. And that eye was Alat's voice, essentially, in his blog, describing what it was like to be at a demonstration that day that was against a referendum that was suggested for the Constitution. That's not what's important now. What's important is that here was this young man I had never heard of before who wrote so passionately and eloquently using the eye, and it was clear that this was what was threatening the Mubarak regime the most. Not the internet, not social media, but the power of the eye. Because what the eye, whether it was spoken by Allah or any other blogger in Egypt at the time was doing, was it was responding to authority and challenging in every single way possible. And that day was, uh, was responsible for a whole bunch of other eyes, i.e. politicization of others in Egypt who had never been politicized before. That day especially, for me as a feminist, but as an Egyptian and for anyone who cares about justice and human rights violation, violations, was, was an awful day in Egypt's modern history because it was the day that the Mubarak regime began to systematically sexually target female activists and journalists on the streets as a way of shaming them and pushing them back home again. And so on May the 25th, many female activists and journalists had their clothes ripped off their backs, had their headscarves removed, were pushed to the ground, and rape was simulated on their bodies. And the reason that we know about this, of course the regime denied it happened. Of course the regime has never put anyone on trial or found justice for those women that were assaulted that way. But we know about that because of bloggers, because of activists on the ground who took pictures and posted those pictures. We have the evidence that the regime denied existed. And where the eye came in was when some of those activists went on satellite television and spoke about those things. And my extended family, that was not very politicized over the past few years, were watching these women speaking, and the eye came out. And they said, this is outrageous. One young Egyptian woman I met when I did move back to Cairo because of the power of Alat's eye, I met her in June, soon after I met Alat, and he took me to my first demonstration. And she told me, you know, when I heard those activists talking about those sexual assaults, I, was, I sat there and I thought, my family gets a say in what I study at university. My family gets a say in who I marry. My boss gets a say in whether I can go and join those demonstrations or not. And now the state tells me that my body doesn't belong to me, and that's when I started to go out and demonstrate. So again, the power of the eye. 
all those individual eyes found themselves online, as Ala and Russia have eloquently shown you. But I will just give you more personal examples of how the eye travels. The eye already traveled from Ala's blog to my apartment in New York and shook me enough to take me back to Egypt. But the eye also traveled here to challenge stereotypes you had of us back there. And that became beautifully encompassed in, in one of the classes that I give. I teach a class on gender and social media. And I taught that class last year at the University of Oklahoma. And I joke, but only semi-joke, that Oklahoma is like the Middle East. Because the combination of politics and religion in Oklahoma is just like the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> and so there I am in my class in Oklahoma. And the best way for me to convey the eye to them, the eye that they would never hear on American television, when my students, when I met them, were in their early 20s, late teens. So of course, when, when the invasion of Iraq happened, they were, what, 13, 14? So they never heard any eye from Iraq, because the only time you heard Iraq being, Iraq being discussed on US TV was whether you were for Bush or against Bush. So I assigned them Riverbend, the Riverbend, um, the, the, the blog written by the young Iraqi woman. And their papers, and I, and I, I signed, uh, uh, her blog was published in two book forms, and they had to write book reviews. And almost every single one of mostly those women in my class, and it was one man, it was women and gender studies, what could I do? And almost every, excuse me, almost every single one of them said in their book reviews that they had to put the book down because they could not believe the power of that eye, and they had never in their lives heard what it was like to be a young Iraqi woman at the receiving end of shock and awe. So there again is the power of the eye. She's sitting there saying, I'm just an ordinary Iraqi woman. I just wanted to go online and rant. And I found this thing called a blog. And here I am ranting. And the other amazing thing about the power of the eye there was that most of those people in my class in Oklahoma were either from military families or knew someone in the US military. So all the eyes, all the narratives they had ever received were from the US media side or the US military side. But here was a chance for them to hear someone on the opposing side that they had never heard, that they had never heard from before. The other eye that I love to also share with my class is the eye from Saudi Arabia. Because we, another country we often hear about where, especially because the US and foreign policy and WikiLeaks and that awful toxic combination. And I always tell people, I, I will kill you. I will literally kill you if you call this a WikiLeaks revolution. Because if WikiLeaks should have created a revolution, it should be right here in the US. Because of, hypocrisy, because of the hypocrisy of US foreign policy. Nevertheless, Saudi Arabia, the narrative that you get of Saudi Arabia is, the Saudi royal family is very modern, it is very liberal, but it's the Saudi population that is holding them back. But then you find bloggers like Saudi Woman, and you find a whole bunch of other bloggers and others on Twitter and others on social media, who, when that Saudi woman two or three weeks ago was imprisoned for driving, went on Twitter and said, I support this woman. When this woman drove and filmed her video and put it on YouTube, who were the ones who were freaking out? It wasn't ordinary Saudis, it was the Saudi royal family. So it gives you the lie to what the Saudi royal family are essentially telling you. So again, you have the power of the eye. And a final power of the eye that I will give you, because I've only got a little more than, than one minute, is how the eye continues after the revolution. And again, the combination of women and feminism and speaking out to authority using the eye. On March 9th, when the Supreme Military Council in Egypt that currently rules our country, broke up all the demonstrations in Tahrir Square and took activists to the museum and then to a prison outside of Cairo, and subjected women to virginity tests and tortured men and women. This was torture of everyone that they arrested. But for the women that they arrested, they subjected to virginity tests. How did we know about these virginity tests? Again, because of the power of the eye. Because of an Egyptian woman called Salwa Husseini, who bravely went before cameras and said, I was subjected to this. This happened to me. She was called a liar. She was called someone who was ruining Egypt's reputation. And it's only last week when a general, speaking on condition of anonymity, admitted that the Egyptian military had actually done this to those young women. So here again, you have the power of the eye challenging the state on the most personal of things and saying, you will not silence me. And the way that Egypt's population, um, I mean, the way that Egypt's revolution will succeed is with all those eyes that have combined. You've heard about Khalid Said from Russia. He died a year ago today exactly. What happened when Khalid Said died was that 
as Alain mentioned and others, uh, and Russia has mentioned, and others who have talked about the, the large mass of the apolitical, what happened when Khalid Saeed died was those on Facebook saw in his face their face. They saw that I could be him. He was not the first man in Egypt to be beaten to death. We've had many people who were beaten to death in Egypt, but they were mostly poor, they were mostly the, the politically involved, or the Islamists. But he was someone who looked like everyone on Facebook. He was someone who looked like I look. And that's one of the most important sparks that you have in a revolution. When the eye connects with the eye in the computer, when Alat's eye spoke to me in that blog entry on May the 25th, 2006, and when Khalid Saeed's shattered face spoke to Egyptians on Facebook, who, yes, many of whom had been slacktivists, when they saw that eye and said, that eye could be me, they went out on the street. And it's that eye, collectively in Egypt, that will tell our Supreme Military Council that we will rule and not you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh,